Okay, in severe cardiogenic shock, regardless regardless of the cause, sometimes we use what we call temporary VADs, ventricular assisting devices. And the main one we use, the brand name called Impella. So if you hear the Impella, that's a brand name of a temporary ventricular assisting device that can be left or right LVAD and RVAD. These temporary VAD are different from the traditional long term VADs, mainly LVADs although now there is RVAD I think these are temporary stays for few days to maybe maximum a week in critically ill patient to support them until their conditions either improve or as a bridge to long term VAD or to transplant heart transplant they are placed usually by cardiologist, sometimes with the help of cardiac surgeons, and completely handled and managed by them as well. So as an internal medicine residence or intern or attending even, we really don't manage much in these patients other than maybe manage their diabetes and some other issues. But anything related to the heart and to the um, ventricular assisting device, everything handled by cardiology. And it works for severe cardiogenic shock regardless of the cause, left and right. How does it work? Without going into details, and to simplify it, we have a device that gets inserted eventually into the aorta and into the eventually the left ventricle and suction the blood from here and pump it into the aorta. It does the job of the Heart. it doesn't bypass it it sits in the left ventricle that's important and then pump the blood into the aorta and again it's temporary that's very important the way impilla looks this is the impilla looks in real life you will see this at bedside and of course connected with catheters and wires to the patients and usually they use the five percent dextrose the barge fluid they call it and the only reason i brought it here you need to remember this and calculate it that the patient receiving five percent dextrose if you have a hyponatremia uh, issues or hypernatremic issues and you need to calculate that as well um, this is the screen you will see in the monitor and pillar monitor and the main practical point here is two things the P number uh, P number you will hear the nurses and the cardiologist talking uh, how much P is a P8 or P9 this is means performance eight or nine or seven or six and each performance make the machine pump certain amount of flow here this p9 will give four liter per minute the higher the performance the higher the flow and the lower the performance the lower the flow the flow the lower the performance that means the less support the patient getting from the impeller so simply you can come and look at the P and if it's the higher the number that means the patient still requiring a lot of support the next thing is this number and these numbers on this screens are arbitrary but sometimes there is a big confusion about these numbers these numbers you can cause a systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure and usually cardiologists like us to monitor these numbers and titrate vasopressors based on these numbers rather than the blood pressure on the the the, the room monitor so 
nurses usually follow these numbers in monitoring vasopressors and monitoring blood pressure so so that's the other uh, if you get confused the nurses can guide you but this is you can consider this is the systolic and diastolic blood pressure and the last thing is some practical points as i said this is completely handled by cardiology so if you receive any questions about it refer it to the cardiologist especially procedure wise or troubleshooting wise can be femoral axis and in this case the patient has to be completely flat on bed while axillary axis they don't have to be so that's another practical point it's important because if you need to lay flat you have to make some arrangements to give nutrition and tube feeds and if the patient let's say is awake and still needs to eat you need to tilt the bed 45 degrees to prevent aspiration the third uh, point I need to bring is remember the patient receiving D5W in case you try to manage hyponatremia and hypernatremia and you need to include that in your calculation the last and very important things is CPR and code blue situations code blue with impilla is similar to other code blues so you do chest compressions you do check the pulse you do medications the only difference you tell them is to lower the flow to the minimum and do not touch this device if you're trying to shock while shocking the patient or trying to shock the patient for vfib or v tac i think these are the main information and that will be adequate for you at this level to know about impilla and temporary left ventricular or right ventricular assisting devices.